Hi, I'm Nancy Hudson and I am with Purdue Extension here in Fulton County. I'm the HHS Extension Educator and I want to show you today how you can do meals in a mug. Now, the first thing that you have to do is look at the mugs that you have in your kitchen. And more than likely, if they're newer mugs, you will see on the bottom that they will tell you whether or not they're microwavable. So you can tell on there uh, if they have any type of metal around the rim, don't put those in your microwave unless you want a big blow up, and I don't think you need that. But at any rate, uh, one with the round bottom is much better than the pretty ones with the square bottoms because these heat more evenly. Uh, you want about a 16 ounce cup, uh, if at all possible. Now some of the coffee cups uh, are huge and you don't want one that could make a dinner for four obviously because this is just a uh, dinner for one in this mug. So let's go from here. What we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to do uh, a breakfast as well as a lunch and we are going to work first with some yogurt and we're going to make a yogurt parfait for breakfast and a lot of folks are into the uh, different types of yogurts this is just your regular yogurt it is not the greek yogurt so this one does have uh, a little bit of uh, sweetness to it so what we're going to do we are going to put um, some of the yogurt uh, in our cup and it's as much as you want. And maybe with this, you might not want uh, a 16 ounce cup. You may want something a little smaller. Uh, and then you can put any type of fruit uh, or anything like that that you want. Um, I've got blueberries. So I'm gonna put some blueberries just on top uh, of this. You can also use strawberries, you could use bananas, you can use pineapples, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm going to put some more yogurt on. And after I'm finished with that, I'm going to put more blueberries on. And this is a very healthy breakfast. Uh, it has a lot of protein. Um, it has a lot of nourishment, provides energy. So this is a good, good type of breakfast. Now, the other thing that I'm going to use is just granola. And I just buy this out of the grocery. Uh, this is just a kind of a oatmeal type honey yogurt. I'm just going to put a little bit here on top. And if you like granola, uh, you'll love this stuff on top of here. So, as you can see, you've got yogurt parfait in a cup. And if you buy this, uh, you're looking at quite a bit of money. If you make it at home, it's so much more budget friendly. So, and very good for you too, because you know exactly what's in here. So this is one idea. This is a wonderful idea um, for breakfast, or maybe even a, an afternoon snack. It could be also good for kids. So this is one of those that's very, very healthy. So let me put this back up. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna do is show you how to do a potato soup in a mug. And once again, I'm gonna use the 16 ounce mug. Now, I am a person who uses recipes and I really uh, follow these recipes and I encourage people, especially folks who are just maybe learning to cook, to read through the recipe first, make sure that you have all of your ingredients, you've got all of your measuring cups and spoons and you've got everything that you need. There is nothing worse than getting your, your stuff together and you're looking and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm out of one ingredient or I don't have anything and you have to run and get it if you continue. So make Make sure that you have everything before you get started. Uh, the first thing that this recipe wants me to do is to take a half a cup of chicken broth, and that's what I have measured here, put this in the mug and microwave this on high for a minute and a half to two minutes. And once I do this, I need to make sure that the broth is boiling uh, before I add any other ingredients. So I'm going to step away and do this. So 
I'm going to microwave that on high for the two minutes. Now, every microwave is different, so you should know your own microwave. It's, if it's an older microwave, it may not rotate, and if that be the case, then you need to stop at midway and turn uh, your item that is inside there. That way, then, the heat is even around the, the uh, cup. So we'll wait for that. The next few things I already have measured out, and that is potato flakes. I have those. Milk, uh, cheese, and I also have green onions and bacon bits and some garlic powder. Now, another thing, if you're trying to watch your salt intake, what you can do is buy low sodium chicken broth and you can buy any brand of that, but that is available, and that helps when you're on a low sodium diet, of course. Uh, the other things that you can look for, uh, this is the bacon bits. You can make your own bacon bits, which probably are very tasty and something like this, probably maybe more so than this, but at any rate, I do realize that this has uh, quite a bit of extra additives and so forth to it too. So make sure that you read your label and know what you're, you're taking in. Uh, garlic powder, once again, uh, this will have some sodium in it. And what you might want to do is just take some garlic and chop it up and put that uh, in your dish instead of using the, the powder where you can get um, more of that sugar flavor, or salt flavor, I'm sorry. Now the other two items that you can put in here obviously are salt and pepper, but I have found that after you're finished with this, one thing that you do wanna do is make sure that you taste it before you salt and pepper. Sorry, I just now got back from the microwave with my heated cup. Now, the other thing is you want to be careful after you have gotten your cup out of the microwave. This one is very hot and it is to the boiling point. Now, what I need to do is with a fork, uh, whisk in my uh, third of a cup of flaked potatoes. And all I did with this, when I went to the grocery, I purchased just a package of the uh, potatoes, so that wasn't bad at all. And folks anymore, they have made these potatoes, these instant potatoes, taste a little better than they did several years ago, so it's really not that bad. Uh, the other thing I want to uh, put in is my garlic powder as well as my milk. And I just want to whisk this to where everything uh, is smooth. Now, the other thing that I want to say, I've got quite a bit of ingredients in here. And if you've got a small whisk, that would be a wonderful uh, thing to use. But a fork will do just as well. You want to make sure that all of your lumps and bumps are out of here um, before you take it back to the microwave. Now, the other thing that's important when you microwave is using a cover. Okay, I'm gonna let this go. I think I've got the uh, lumps out of it. You can either put a plastic wrap over it to keep it from spilling out the microwave or coming over. And when you do that, you want to fold your plastic over just a bit so that you can vent it and that lets the air out. Another idea is use just a coffee cup uh, uh, lid from uh, just a carryout place because there's a vent hole here and there's one here. So that would easily slip on and that too will release a lot of the, the steam. So I'm gonna take this back over and put this in for about 40 seconds.
And after this comes out, we're going to let it stand for a while. Anytime that you microwave, you want your, uh, your dish to stand at room temperature for just a few minutes because really when it comes out of the microwave, it is still cooking. So always remember that instead of adding extra time when it comes out, just let it set for a couple of minutes and uh, usually your taste and uh, the way that you want it, it'll be wonderful. It'll turn out just great. So we'll give that a little bit of time and then we're gonna add our toppings to it. Now most people love potato soup and when you do potato soup, you can put you know, green onions, which I've, I've already cut up. You can do the bacon bits, the cheese, whatever. It's whatever your taste bud calls for, whatever you like on your potato. And baked potato soup is one of these things that most people just love because it's kind of a down-home uh, flavor and it's highly uh, nourishing and very healthy. So I'm going to let this stand for just a few minutes. Now notice when I pull this off, you can see or I can feel the steam coming off of it. So uh, when I vented it, that keeps that steam from popping out at me and maybe burning me. So that's a good thing about that. So always around the edge, there will be a little bit of baked film. You just want to work that in. Now, the other thing is, if it is too thick for you, you can add more broth to it. You can also add more milk. If you add the broth, it will be a thinner uh, ingredient and it will taste a little more um, watery, I guess. If you use the milk, it's gonna be more of a creamy flavor. Now, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add just a little bit more broth in here because to me, this is a little thick. Now, when I'm done with this, I can put my uh, cheese on, my green onions, as well as my bacon bits and follow your recipe and you're, you're good to go. But this is good for, like I said before, people who just have one or two that they're cooking for, these ideas are very, very budget friendly. Uh, they are also for people who don't have a lot of time uh, to prepare food in the kitchen. And it's also a way to get your nutrition without having to do a lot of extra work. Because honestly, when you are down to a household of two, when maybe at one point you were six people or perhaps four, it is, it's different to cook for two people. So this is just one of the ways that you can do this. At the office here, I do have recipes for uh, spaghetti in a mug. I've got recipes for meatballs in a mug, um, all kinds of uh, egg recipes. You might think, oh gross, you know, egg in a microwave. What does that taste like? Well, honestly, it's not bad. So if you want any type of recipe, and I also have recipes for baking. I've got one that you use angel food cake mix as well as uh, regular cake mix. And it does, when it's done, it tastes just like a very moist cake. So if you are interested in any of these recipes, please give me a call here at the office. And our number is 574-223-3397 or just email me at nahudson at purdue.edu. Um, hopefully you've picked up some interesting tips and I'll be back next month with something else that I've uh, conjured up here. So if you have any questions, just give me a call.